Good evening and welcome back to our series of election forums produced by the Long Beach Community Action Partnership with Padnet.tv, your community media center and Long Beach's public access television station. I'm Matt Kaplan, back this time with all four of the candidates who'd like to become the next city council member representing Long Beach's 5th district, a seat currently held by mayoral candidate Jerry Shipsky. We're broadcasting live on Charter Channel 32 and Verizon Channel 41 in Long Beach and beyond. We're also streaming live at padnet.tv. That's where all of these forums are available as video on demand. Additional cable cast times are also listed on our elections page, that same website, padnet.tv. We once again have just one hour for tonight's forum. Need I add that no voter can expect to be fully informed in that amount of time? I'm sure that our candidates and our distinguished panelists would join me in encouraging you to learn more before the April 8th election. But we will help you get acquainted this evening. The candidates will introduce themselves in a moment. First, though, let's meet our three panelists. Each of them will have time to ask two questions. Each candidate will have one strictly enforced minute to respond. The panelists are Leonard Kelly, an editor of the Long Beach City College Viking newspaper, and the LBCC Liberal Arts Campus is in District 5. Judy Ross, Executive Director of the Long Beach Nonprofit Partnership. And Dave Willinga, publisher and editor of the alt-local website, greaterlongbeach.com. Let's now get underway by allowing each candidate to make a one-minute opening statement. And we'll begin on my immediate left with Carl Kemp. Thanks, Matt. You know, I've lived in this city for 20 years, and Long Beach has made my life from Long Beach State, where I served two terms as student body president, to the city of Long Beach, where I started the government affairs program for the city manager and the port. I've had the opportunity to work on some great programs for this entire city and advocate in Sacramento and DC for them. For the C-17 Red Team, where I worked with Mayor O'Neill and Vice Mayor Kell to save jobs in our city, to the conversion of the Long Beach Naval Hospital into the retail center you see today with Jerry Miller. My priorities are economic development, public safety, and infrastructure, and that is why public safety, police, fire, and teachers, the people we trust with safety and the ones we love, trust me to get the job done. I respectfully request your support on April 8th for Long Beach City Council District 5. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Next, we'll hear from Joe Liban. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Liban. I'm a resident of the 5th District for the last 50 years. Thank everybody here at Padnet TV. Since I got here this evening, you've all made me feel very comfortable. Once again, my name is Joe Liban. I'm 54 years old. I've been married to my wife, Frances, for 34 years. We have five beautiful children, and we're expecting our seventh grandchild. I jumped in this race the first one a year ago to let people know that being in the private sector my whole life is something I've done, but now I'm reverting to the public sector. My father and mother, John and Rosalie Liban, opened in 1967 Liban Family Mortuary, which is known throughout the 5th District, and our families touched thousands of lives. I wanted to tell everybody here this evening, thank you for your time, and I look forward to this. Thank you. And thank you, Joe. We'll move on now to Stacy Mungo. Hello, my name is Stacy Mungo, and I was born right here in Long Beach Memorial Hospital. I was a product of Long Beach Unified Schools. I attended Long Beach City College and went on to have a presidential scholarship to Cal State. I've had opportunities to work in private industry and give back through the nonprofit organizations such as the YMCA. I was very fortunate to be accepted to USC and participate and graduate from their renowned master's program in public administration. And I've utilized those skills as a budget director for the County of Los Angeles, focusing on senior citizen needs and workforce development where we help get people jobs. I have a passion for Long Beach, and I differentiate myself from other candidates by the ways that I've already given back to the 5th District. I've been a neighborhood association leader um, and president of my neighborhood, and I volunteer my time as a reserve deputy sheriff. Thank you, Stacy. And last, we will hear from Tom Sutphin. Hi, I want to thank uh, Padnet for putting this on. It uh, helps create an informed and uh, uh, fantastic place to live in Long Beach. Um, I'm a longtime resident of uh, the city of Long Beach. Um, I've been teaching in Long Beach for over two decades. Um, started my career at Jordan High School, and I've been uh, at Millican High School supporting the development of uh, young people there for over 20 years. 
Uh, that equates to thousands of kids. Um, I, I care about Long Beach. Uh, I'm, I met my wife here in Long Beach. I have two wonderful kids uh, who are going to Long Beach schools. I care deeply about, uh, about Long Beach. Um, I'm running for a simple reason. Um, I, I started a conversation with a friend and um, uh, complained, and he gave me my own, my own advice back, which is to do something about it. And so I took the first step and uh, filed my papers to run for city council. Um, part of the big things I want to take care of is uh, I want to have open and honest conversations about the issues in Long Beach. Uh, some of those issues are um, quality communities. Um, and Tom, I'll have thank to, you. we'll have to leave it at that. Thank you very much, all of you candidates. Uh, the first of our panelists with a, a question for you is Leonard Kelly of Lo the Long Beach uh, City College Viking newspaper. Leonard? Hi, everybody. Oh, you need this, Leonard. Here you go. Oh. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for bringing me here. And uh, I get to represent Long Beach City College. I work with the Viking newspaper. I'm an editor there. And uh, I'll be speaking with uh, Carl Kemp first. Um, I'm curious, uh, do you have any ideas on what would be um, going on with the McDonnell Douglas area now that they're moving out? Well, it came to our attention that that's a lot of property. And what, uh, what will you be striving for as far as putting uh, or having something replaced there? Thank you for that question. Uh, Jerry Miller, the former city manager and immediate past president of the Long Beach Chamber of Commerce, is the head of my economic development kitchen cabinet. And I had the privilege of working on the Boeing uh, Douglas Park project as their community outreach person. You know, I think that the 5th District has an opportunity to be the hub of economic development in our city. And I would love for us to be nimble and bold in our approach to taking that land that we were unfortunate and unfortunately not able to save the jobs for the C-17, but converting that into something that brings business into this city, such as, um, you know, Mercedes-Benz is going in in that, in that big private, in that big uh, blank spot over there. Uh, and Saris Regis has done a great job of turning uh, the Douglas Park project into something that we can all be proud of. I look forward to working with them and my economic development team and the city manager to, to get the job done right and form a red team to make sure we have public interest and the right private minds involved to get it done. All right, thank you, Carl. We'll next hear from Joe Liban. You know, that's a great question. Uh, I remember as a young kid living in Lakewood Village, uh, which is part of the 5th District, uh, that all happening over there when it was big time McDonnell Douglas. Uh, as you folks know in this room tonight and at home here on TV, that program at Boeing is disintegrating extremely quick. By the year 2016, I don't think there'll be much left of Boeing over there, which is exciting. Uh, we do have the Mercedes-Benz coming in to bring all of their brand new cars into that area where they'll be prepped and pushed through. Uh, as I drive through that area, we have companies over there, Rubbercraft right now, other places, uh, companies in there with different places to eat. It's exciting. It all turns and reaches in with the Long Beach Airport. And ladies and gentlemen, if I am elected to this office, being the only businessman up here, starting my own company out of my garage with a permit from the city of Long Beach 24 years ago, I bring business experience. I will look forward to working with Saris Regis, the other developer that's over in that facility right now. They are huge. They are big to Long Beach. We need to treat them with respect and take care of this. Thank you, Joe. Stacy Mungo. Wonderful question. I'm fortunate to be endorsed by the Chamber of Commerce for the plan that I presented to them in the interview process where we competed for their endorsement. I've sat down with the business owners in and around the airport, including, but not limited to, Boeing, and we've talked about our future and the types of businesses that we look to bring in. A lot of businesses have challenges getting through the red tape of City Hall, and I promise, when I'm your, your council person, that we will have a business liaison in our local office who works with and partnerships with the, the local businesses that are trying to move into the area. I'd also like to propose a citywide uh, holiday on permits. So if you are able to grow or bring a business to Long Beach, we would find a way to make that easier for you. We need to find a way to make it best for people to locate their businesses here in Long Beach. Businesses that have jobs and businesses that lead to careers. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutton. Thank you for that question. That is probably the most important question that I think we have to deal with today. 
uh, what's facing the 5th District as well as uh, the rest of Long Beach is the, is the final uh, shutdown of the Boeing C-17 projects. We're talking three to 5,000 jobs that are gonna be gone in 2015. That's less than a year away. We're 2014 now, and we're going to be losing those in 2015. Uh, there's no appear, uh, appearance that uh, Boeing's going to throw any kind of work back at us here, so that does seem that it's going to close. What we need to work on and work towards is a very concerted effort towards uh, developing uh, industry inside of Long Beach, uh, particularly Douglas Park, and it needs to be thoughtful in how we bring people in there. Right now we have a bunch of vacancies, there's buildings going and we're getting great progress. The important part is, the, impor impor the important part is this, we need to get high tech industry in Long Beach. We need to be a Silicon Valley of the South. And thank you, Tom. All right, we'll go now to Judy Ross of the Long Beach Nonprofit Partnership for the first of her two questions. And answering first this time will be Joe Liven. Judy? Thank you. Good evening, candidates. <clears throat> With this upcoming election, it looks like there m may be many new faces in City Hall, possibly more than half of new city council members and a new mayor. If you are elected, what ideas do you have to bring this new group of leaders together in your role as council member? Joe? Judy, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. That's an interesting question. Yeah, this is, uh, this is history in Long Beach. You know, stemming back to 50 years I've been here, as a little guy, you don't remember too much about down at City Hall, but we do now. There's a possibility of five new people coming into City Hall. How would I work with these people? Well, I guess it's like the 80 manufacturers and distributors that I have with my corporation for the last 24 years. You bring in solid, good people. These ones will be voted in, so they should be the best, the most solid that we can possibly get into City Hall. That's why it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, that everybody really takes the time not to focus on one candidate, but look at every single candidate. Look at their resume. Look at everything they've done, business experience, everything else. But not only that, understand that we're all part of this city together, knowing that each and every one of us in this city can make a difference. Thank you. And thank you, Joe. Stacy Mungo. One of the great parts of having been a neighborhood association leader is that I've already worked with our current council members and not all nine of them are turning over. So once elected, we'll already have a relationship to build upon. My style of leadership is very collaborative. I work hand in hand with neighbors and listen to their needs and People throughout the city are calling out for the same types of things. We need strong public safety. We need to remember to plan our infrastructure funds appropriately so our streets are paved and our sidewalks are, are straight and our trees are trimmed. And all of us throughout the city need to work on that together. And fortunately, I have worked hand in hand with our current council members and many of the candidates from other districts. So I look forward to collaborating with them in the future. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutton. Uh, thank you, Judy, for that question. It's, uh, it, it is a historic time uh, in the city of Long Beach. Um, it is a great opportunity for all the voters uh, in the 5th District is across, the, uh, across Long Beach uh, to have an impact <laughs> on what happens in the next uh, four years. Um, if you want the same kind of business as usual, um, vote in individuals who are very familiar with downtown, vote in individuals who um, have, uh, have been there and have, have uh, have lots of experience in the city. If you want new blood, please start looking at some of the new people on, uh, that are out here and, and running campaigns. Um, Judy, the, the important part of, of that question, I think, is collaboration, and it is extremely important to be collaborative, uh, and I've got some great experience and great, uh, great ideas uh, to do that. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Carl Kemp, you're uh, batting cleanup this time. Thanks. Uh, you know, Knowing people, having relationships, that, that's what, what I do for my business. Joe, you're not the only businessman up here, but I, I appreciate the sentiment. Um, knowing who's on city council, it's what I do. Knowing the people who work in city hall, it's where I come from. And having them work together is something that historically hasn't been achieved. We all want to do a good job for the city, but having the experience to do it is what I have. But I also know from experience that the council has never had a chance to work collaboratively just to get to know each other. So my idea is to work with Leadership Long Beach, have them come in, do some of the mountains courses that have nothing to do with policy, no Brown Act violations, and give us a chance to get to know each other on a human level so that when we work outside of our particular district, we have the whole city in mind. 
and we are working together based upon our trust that the people we're working with, um, we know, and we've learned them, and we respect them, and we can work together. Getting to know each other is a big part of being able to work together. And that does wrap up that. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, all of you. You're doing a great job with this. Uh, the last of our panelists that we'll be uh, hearing from in this round is Dave Willinga, and he is of GreaterLongBeach.com. Dave, your question will first be answered by Stacy Mungo. Well, hi, pan uh, hi, candidates. Uh, I met all of you a few months ago at an event that the current incumbent held at her council uh, field office to give all of you a foundation, um, just the basics on what it really means to be a council member in that district. But going forward, a lot can happen in four years, and I'm wondering if, and some of that stuff will catch you by surprise, and I'm wondering if, if since you've become candidates, uh, as you've uh, gotten to know constituents, if, you've, if there's a hole that has, you've, you've seen in your own experience or your own qualifications, and if so, what that is and how you are catching yourself up. That's a very interesting question. Um, one of the things that's been great about this process is that I'm putting to work what I've learned and taught at USC for many years. And so it's great to work in the County of Los Angeles and work hand in hand to make sure that we're fiscally responsible. And when neighbors ask questions about these kinds of things, to be able to have those, those answers to go to because you've been working in that industry for a very long time. To be able to give the real world experience, I, I still guest lecture at USC and was in a class a few weeks ago, and to be able to communicate back that voters really do ask the hard questions. The questions about why did this street get paved and not that street? What's a Measure C fund and what's a Measure A fund and why does that give this neighborhood a priority? Today I was asked very bluntly why my neighborhood got new traffic lights and none of the other neighborhoods have gotten that. And we talked about uniting a community and what kind of funds are available. And one of the things I know that I'm gonna work hard for is that we need to bring those funds back from D.C. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutman, it's your turn. Uh, thank you, Dave. That's a, that's a very good question, very insightful question. Um, uh, as a teacher, I, I uh, am constantly critically looking at uh, my students and giving them feedback. Uh, so giving me the chance to give myself some feedback is a, is a great thing. Um, as I walk the neighborhood, there's, there's uh, lots of questions that come up. Um, uh, lots of things that I see. One of the large issues that, that uh, is, is paramount in my mind is the unemployed uh, employees from Boeing. There are a significant number of unemployed uh, Boeing uh, uh, employees. Um, to impact that and to bring people together over those issues I think is, is, is important. Now a good example of one of the challenges that we face, uh, we recently added a dog park to our El Dorado Park and we had really two strong factions dealing with and debating where it should go. Should it go here? Should it go there? There were some hurt feelings. Um, that really is the, is the art, I believe, of, of being a city councilman. And that is the challenge which, uh, which I feel I'm prepared for. All right, we'll bring it back down to the other end here. Carl Kemp. I didn't know how much crime was in the 5th District. Um, you know, it's the boardwalk and park place of our city. Everybody knows that I've known that for the 20 years I've lived here. I'm proud to have my family there now. Uh, but it's, it's a up, there's a huge uptick in crime, and in fact, my wife's car just got broken into last week. Um, until we fund public safety at the appropriate levels, we're never going to be respected as, as the international city we claim to be and crawl out of the shadow of Los Angeles. I have a plan on day one to establish an ongoing uh, budget so that we have a consistent, reliable, academy for police and we can bring the highest response times in our city's fire department's history uh, down to something that we expect and deserve in this city. All right, thank you, Carl. And Joe Liven, you'll be the last we hear from on this question. Well, thank you, Matt. You know, it's interesting, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the 5th District, which I've done for 50 years, you look at parks, you look at libraries, you look at our public safety, Here's where we have problems, I feel, from one to 10. Public safety is the most important thing around everybody. Over in Lakewood Village, we kind of feel of ourselves as a Mayberry RFD town. It's not getting that way the other night. We were over at uh, Mark Twain at the auditorium, filled the auditorium with people that are concerned about breakings and things that are happening there. Also getting back to the parks infrastructure, ladies and gentlemen, in the fifth district needs serious attention. Owning a corporation, I look at infrastructure every single day of the week. It takes a person 
to get out and go door to door to door and find out what these problems are. Public safety, libraries, streets, trees. It's that simple. All right, Joe, and thank you once again, candidates. It's my turn now, and uh, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of our host, the Long Beach Community Action Partnership, or LBCAP, which is, of course, one of Long Beach's most active and accomplished agencies working on behalf of the disadvantaged in our community. Uh, Tom Suffin, I'd like you to provide the uh, first response this time around. What is your vision for working with all sectors of the city, including those with low incomes? Uh, great question. Thank you for that. Um, uh, it, having such a city that we have, we have an incredibly diverse city, and um, there are a lot of great things uh, going on right now. Uh, James Johnson has a wonderful event that he, that he does uh, every Friday night where it brings a community out, and, and virtually everybody's out there. I've had the opportunity to, uh, to enjoy that experience. Um, part, of, uh, part of my plan, one of the things I would love to do and, and have a plan for is to create um, uh, not something called Neighborhood Watch, but something called Neighborhood Support. And that's where communities come out. You, you, uh, it's, it's essentially uh, hosting and creating uh, community around uh, local events and uh, having, having uh, everybody in neighborhoods come out and do that. And I'd love to do that school, um, uh, citywide. All right. Thank you, Tom. Carl Kemp. There but for the grace of God go I. And I come from very humble beginnings myself. Um, when we take care of the least of us, all of us do better. Uh, what I would love to do on day one is get serious about economic development to address the 12% unemployment we have in this city. We have more un unemployment than the national standard, than the state standard. And on day one, uh, at no cost to the taxpayer, we can put together an economic development tiger team. We can appoint somebody as the lead of that team, take members of our city staff, put them in one place who are currently in charge of economic development, and have them work synergistically to come up with a plan for economic development in the city. I worked under uh, the economic development director, Jerry Miller, who became city manager, and we don't have that right now. So we can't expect that to change unless we have that plan. And then we need to partner them with businesses outside of the city because those are our best advocates, the folks who we actually help. I want to create a fast lane for business, and when we do that, we create jobs. When we create jobs, we take care of the unemployment in our city. And we take I'll care of the unemployment. I'll stop you there, Carl. I'm sorry. We help the minute is a very us. tight, uh, tight uh, fit. Yes, it is. Uh, we're going to go on to Joe Lydon now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's nine districts in this city. We're all competing for a job up here tonight to be your councilman for the 5th district. I'm happy to say, being the largest geographical district in the city of Long Beach, we're pretty proud to say that we don't have much poverty. We do have some on our street in the 5th district. That's where the question earlier was so important of saying, what are you going to do to work with the 9th Council District? What are you going to do with the 8th Council District? What are you going to do with the 7th and the 6th? All of them need our attention. Being on the City Council and knowing that I have to go for the next four years down to City Hall is going to be tough, but I'm okay with that. But we have to w understand one thing. We're coming with our ideas for the 5th, but please don't disregard anybody that's on the streets right now. There are people that don't eat at night. There are people that don't have a car that have to do everything they can to support themselves. We need to come out of our shell in the 5th District because we've done so well and show that to the other districts. I'll tell you one thing, I'll take care of that. And Joe, thank you. Stacy Mungo, you'll be the last we hear from in this round. I'm very fortunate to work for an organization who really provides a safety net and looks after our most vulnerable individuals, our senior citizens and our unemployed. And the work that I do by day has really inspired the work that I do for volunteerism. We are so fortunate to have so many nonprofits in Long Beach that are there providing for our most vulnerable residents. Tom re re referenced the Neighbor for Neighbor program. The Neighbor for Neighbor program is something that we love Long Beach, is really connecting neighbors together and pulling them in. The YMCA of Greater Long Beach raises hundreds of thousands of dollars to um, provide low-income families with opportunities to go to camp and opportunities for their kids to be in child care so that parents can go out and find those jobs. I would continue to partner with nonprofits, link them to the government agencies that can provide the employment opportunities and the mental health resources needed to help some of these families get out of those needy times. We're very fortunate that as a county, we've set aside $50 million to address these issues, and we need to make sure a lot of that money is coming back to Long Beach. 
And thank you all candidates. I'm a 5th District uh, resident and uh, I'm very happy to see that we're going to be, uh, it's going to be a difficult choice. Uh, but we'll uh, get another opportunity after we come back from a two minute break to learn a bit more about all four of the candidates for Long Beach's 5th District City Council seat. And when they answer another round of questions from our panelists, this is a Long Beach Community Action Partnership Election Forum coming to you live on padnet.tv. Stay with us. At the Long Beach Community Action Partnership, we're very proud of the millions of dollars that we provide in utility assistance services. And we're also proud of the thousands of people that we assist, including youth, adults, and seniors. But what we're most proud of are the relationships that we build one-on-one -on -one with people just like you to build a stronger community. Join us in changing lives and making a difference. very pet friendly. Everybody has a dog in Long Beach. It's Dog City. Well, there's everything to do here. You got the pike, you got Queen Mary, you got the beaches, you got paddle boarding, surfing. You go half a mile that way, you got surfing, you got downtown. I just think it's the most, most incredible, most beautiful, most unique city, which has so much to offer. So I love it here and I'll never leave. Welcome back to the Long Beach Community Action Partnership and PadNet Candidate Forum for the 5th Council District in Long Beach. We are live on Charter Channel 32 and Verizon Channel 41 in Long Beach and streaming around the world at PadNet.tv. This is the fourth of the forums that LBCAP and PadNet will present as we head toward the April 8th election. We'll take a break next week and then return on Wednesday, March 5th at 7 p.m. to meet the candidates in the 7th District. We're going to finish this series by inviting back the candidates for mayor of Long Beach on April 2nd. All of these are or will be available as video on demand events at padnet.tv. They will also be replayed on Charter and Verizon several times before the election. The schedules for those replays will also be on the padnet.tv election page. And while you're there, we hope you'll take a look at some of the terrific Padnet programming produced by your Long Beach neighbors. We're now going to return to Leonard Kelly of the uh, Viking newspaper at LBCC, who has a second question, and our responses will begin with Carl Kemp. Leonard. Hi again, everyone. Um, Long Beach City is just awesome as far as I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm very proud to be here and living here. I've noticed that the Long Beach City College is getting a facelift. And a lot of money has been being spent getting ready for the year 2020, where um, new uh, Long Beach City College needs uh, students that are going to be graduates. They're going to need them degrees. Uh, and you have to make sure that we're up to the level of them degrees in that to keep up with the workforce here in Long Beach. So I was wondering, uh, what are your plans with anything at the college that is going to help these students. They got hit with Proposition um, AB 955, and uh, th that put a dent in students' uh, thinking. So I'm wondering how you can help uh, bring, bring back the initiative of these students that they just really want to uh, be at Long Beach City College and uh, produce, uh, get, their, get going through and get their uh, certificates. All right, Carl. You know, as a, as a graduate of Long Beach State myself, uh, and the first person in my family to graduate from college, both undergrad and graduate, I understand exactly what these students are going through. It's a scary experience to go from wherever you are onto a college campus. And so what I found very useful 
was a network on campus to reach out to those students. But that network needs to be citywide and it needs to be linked up between the K through 12, CSULB, and LBCC. So we have this seamless education um, tie together. Uh, as a member of the Long Beach Education Foundation Board, uh, I know firsthand that if we take the time with students, they will come through and they will make us proud as a city. I'd also like to see us partner with the private sector so that when they do graduate or in the midst of trying to find themselves, they have an opportunity to have an internship at some of our local businesses and our local businesses have a, an opportunity to have some of our bright future minds in their shops and maybe some of their future employees. That'll help us address the 12% unemployment rate we have in this city and it'll keep our city cohesive. Thank you, Carl. Joe Lydon. Ladies and gentlemen, 1978 and 79, I was a student at Long Beach City College. It was exciting. I lived three blocks from City College and from that time to now, I hear the jackhammers going every day. I walk that campus. Tough to find any more bunny rabbits around there, but I walk that campus all the time. I've spoken to Ginny Baxter, who's running for the board over there at Long Beach City College. I know the people over at Long Beach City College. It's exciting what's happening right now. Their culinary program is magnificent. Gary Anderson, the basketball program with the other folks over there is magnificent. I don't think really we need to do anything but get more adjusted to helping those students. I drive by there every single day of my life. There's a lot of kids that look confused. I think when I get this job for the next four years, I'm gonna walk that campus, I'm gonna talk to the kids even more than I do already. I was in that place this morning on my bike. Long Beach City College is exciting. There's nothing wrong with it. We just need to keep throwing some salt and pepper on it and making it good. Thank you, Joe. You're Stacy welcome. Mungo. As a student at Long Beach City College in 1996 and 1997, we weren't there at the <coughs> same time. Um, so you're saying I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we had a lot of programs that have been discontinued. It's really a shame to see the music program. The Southern California Association of Car Dealers, who's endorsed me, pulled out of that um, organization because they didn't feel they had partnership with the city. They chose to endorse me and get behind me because they know that I focus on job development and programs that are alternatives to a four-year university. We also lost a program related to our aviation. We have an airport right here in Long Beach and to lose some of our aviation training opportunities right here adjacent to the airport is a shame. As a council person, I'll be accessible. I'll be on campus and I'll partnership with the Workforce Development Board of LA County who spends lots of money with LA Community College, but not as much here with Long Beach Community College. And we need some of that money right here in Long Beach. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutton. Uh, that question is dear to my heart. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to be done. And a lot of it's gonna start with career to school to career opportunities. Um, inspiration has to come from within. Uh, we, have to, we have to strengthen as a city, we have to do our part now and start strengthening those connections for students who are leaving college. Because once students can see a cohesive plan, they can see, okay, I'm going to two years at Long Beach City and then I'm gonna go to Long Beach State or I'm gonna go to Career. Uh, that's, that, that piece has to be in place. Long Beach Unified and the, others, the other colleges have created uh, school to career opportunities. Long Beach Unified School District is doing wonderful things with school to career and STEM activities, those kinds of things. Those are the types of things we need to start inspiring our kids to do. Um, a, a huge travesty happened uh, three or four years ago when we cut 11 programs. Those have to be fully brought back. Um, there's, those, are, those are such crucial jobs, uh, job opportunities that we are missing in, in the city of Long Beach right now. It is incredibly imperative that we, that we work to inspire the kids. Once they're inspired, we can do anything. Thank you, Tom. We're going to go now to Judy Ross, who has a question. Uh, and the first will, to respond to her second question will be Joe Liven. Great. <coughs> well, my question um, is concerns uh, an issue that's near and dear to my heart, and that's nonprofit organizations. So <coughs> nonprofit organizations make up a sizable percentage of the workforce in our city, and of course provide city, our city wonderful services. Such, and they span the spectrum from the arts to social services, healthcare, youth services, and so many more. As a member of council, what role do you see yourself taking in support of the nonprofit sector? And what ideas do you have in how the public sector might partner with the nonprofit sector so we actually can work together? Joe. 
Well, thank you very much. Your voice sounds a lot better too, by the way. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's special because uh, we're sitting in a place tonight that's a nonprofit organization. This is a quality facility. Each and every person on a volunteer basis. I was talking to one of the people here tonight. He doesn't get paid for being at PadNet. He enjoys his thing. I think each and everybody in the city of Long Beach, not just the 5th District, should be involved in some sort of nonprofit. They're great. There's a reason why they say nonprofit. They don't want the money. They just want to take care of problems that exist in our city. From the animal shelter to this facility to the rest of them, we can all partner in. But I think, you know, something we all forget about as we get wrapped up in our lives and as many things as we can do is, what can we do to volunteer in this city with any one nonprofit? And what's so exciting about that, a nonprofit can be anyone you pick. Go pick one. Check them all out. They're all over the website. Go up and down the streets. There's one for you. Thank you, Joe. Stacy Mungo. This is one of my favorite questions. I'm passionate about nonprofit organizations. I started working for the YMCA in 1995, and I saw how um, reaching out and working hand in hand with the, your council person makes a big difference in getting your initiatives, um, the publicity that they need, and the recognition that they need so that the nonprofit can be even more effective. In the County of Los Angeles, the Department of Community and Senior Services budget utilizes nonprofits to get their work done. Public-private partnerships through nonprofits is one of the most effective ways to reach out into the community where the people are connected to the local groups. Um, there's no one who knows anyone better than their neighbors, and your local nonprofit is where those kids are on a daily basis, whether it's your Boys and Girls Club, your after-school programs. That's where the real work gets done. And I'm so proud to have been a mentor in the YMCA and taught law, youth in government. And I feel that there's more opportunities as your council person to advocate on behalf of all the nonprofits in Long Beach. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutton. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing that, the thing that comes to mind right now is sharing is caring. And when you jump into a nonprofit um, or, or you, uh, take it back to even what we do in, in Long Beach Unified with uh, community uh, service. When somebody volunteers for a short period of time and gives a little bit back to the community, um, th that return is tenfold uh, uh, down the road. There's, you're more likely as a student to uh, be connected to and provide more uh, service to your community uh, if you volunteer a little bit. Um, what, what we can do uh, from the perspective of City Council is to support and expand what we have uh, with nonprofits, specifically around the creation of jobs and supporting job growth, spe specifically around uh, stimulating these ideas of, of incubators. Um, those, are, those are paramount issues that I think we need to, to address. And thank you, Tom. Carl Kemp. You know, Joe's right, pick one. Uh, Long Beach Conservation Corps, Better Learning After School Today, the um, Boy Scouts, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, the Long Beach Education Foundation, Leadership Long Beach. I'm proud that in my 20 years I've been able to serve on each and every one of those and do a number of things in this city with all aspects of our community. In the 5th District, we're lucky to have the Girl Scouts, Long Beach Day Nursery, uh, and, and your uh, nonprofit that brings nonprofits together. My job as a council person, to answer your question, is to use the platform to maximize what we can do for those offices, whether it be showing up where you tell me to, to sell what the organization is, or whether it be selling that organization on, on a trip to Sacramento or DC. My job as a council person is to use my experience in nonprofits and my understanding of what the nonprofits are in our city and of course our district to maximize what their needs are and to listen. I want to bring those nonprofits together, understand what their issues are, and then work together to solve those problems. And thank you, Carl. We'll go now to the last of our panelists for his second question. That's Dave Walenga. And uh, this one will be answered first by Stacy Mungo. Hello again, Stacy. And, and all four of you are obviously campaigning to be uh, the 5th District's representative on the City Council. At the same time, the current City Council seems to be on its way to um, authorizing the construction of a brand new Civic Center, many, many millions of dollars, that is going to be handed off, it's going to be part of your reality when you take office. Um, the, con the process seems to have been, um, it's controversial, some say secretive, and I'm just wondering whether or not, in your opinion, we need a new Civic Center now, uh, if you've been happy with the process, and whether the current council should wait and allow the 
the council that's going to exist for the next four years to take office and allow kind of defer to them and uh, let you make the decision. Thank you, Dave. Stacy. Recently, all of us had the opportunity to sit down with our um, staff at City Hall and get a briefing on the status of the Civic Center and where we're going. One of the things that's interesting about the Civic Center project is that we currently have $10 million a year that we spend in maintenance and usage of the current Civic Center. After Katrina, level one reviews of all government buildings returned results that stated that our Civic Center would need a level two review. The level two review has put us in a position where we need a new evaluation of how much it will cost us to seismically retrofit City Hall. If a public-private partnership makes sense and we're able to absorb that $10 million, of years, $10 million a year in costs into the new plan where we would not be paying any more as taxpayers, then we need to look at a frugal um, opportunity that we have to make City Hall safe. But first and foremost, we need to check the seismic activity charts. Thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutphin. Uh, great question. Um, one of the main things that I feel is, is actually being fast-tracked uh, through, our, through our city government right now, uh, that and the, uh, the current marijuana issue. Um, the, the issue with city council is really one that is, uh, is really going to be placed upon one of us uh, to manage. And uh, as I see it, the challenge is going to be that there's going to be a large investment of money before we get there. And then we're going to be tasked with making a decision, well, do we move forward with this or do we actually go back and take three or four steps backwards to restart it? So it's going to be a real interesting time when we're faced with that. Um, I would love to see the current city council just kind of slow down and let the new, uh, the new group kind of deal with it so that we can make a thoughtful, well-informed decision on what's going to happen with that. Because the, I'll leave it at that. There's a, there's a whole bunch more that goes along with that, but thank mm, you. There's always so much more that could be said, sure. but thank you, Tom. Carl Kemp. You know, uh, it's, it's yet to be determined whether or not we'll have a chance to, to make uh, uh, an impact in that conversation. But playing the hypothetical, if I had the chance, I would want to make sure that um, the seismic uh, retrofit uh, investigation was thorough. Uh, if I become councilman and it's before me, there are a couple of things I want to make sure we do. Number one, top priority, make sure that we have adequate public input. This is a huge investment of taxpayer dollars, and the public needs to have its input heard. Number two, world-class design. Let's have something that makes us proud and stand out in this city if we're going to have it. Number three, make sure those jobs stay in Long Beach. And number four, make sure that it's sustainable. Let's have the highest possible quality we can have with the highest lead standard we can have so that we have something that's functional. But I'll tell you this, I live in the 5th District and it's a long way to downtown. We should take some of that money and create a virtual city hall so we can get business done from the comfort of our home and our current website is inadequate. Thank you, Carl. Joe Liban, you'll wrap this one up. Well, Dave, thank you for your question. It was uh, extremely big. You know, folks, when you're talking over $200 million for a project, that seems to me to be a lot of money. I've ran my company for the last 24 years. If I come into one of my warehouses in the morning and one of the tires is flat on one of my fleet of trucks, I fix the tire. I don't go into my office and put an oil painting. We don't have a truck in Station 19. We're missing a fire truck in Station 19. We're probably 180 cops below what we need. Rest response times, everything else. I'd like to see the reins pull back on this horse. Take a look at it. There's a good chance, if any of us elected up here, we won't even be part of that process. But they've started it. That's great. It's wonderful. But right now, I think we should slow down for one reason. If indeed it's a seismic problem, why aren't those people out of that building right now? They're not out of that building. Take the $200 million and put it on hold. Take the million dollars to research this and put a fire station back in uh, Fire Station 19. Matt says he's part of the 5th District. So am I. Let's take Got to stop fifth. you there. Thank you. Uh, candidates, it's my turn again. And uh, I think I may have the biggest challenge for you of the evening in view of our uh, one-minute limit. And, uh, Tom, you're going to be the first to uh, tackle this one. Uh, you've all been spending a lot of time in the district, obviously, and you've been uh, listening to citizens who live in the district, like me, not that I've had a chance to talk with you about this. What's your address? <laughs> Later. Um, surely you have heard some issues mentioned over and over. And I wonder, Tom, beginning with you, if you could talk about or just very quickly mention 
the top two or three issues that you've heard about and what you're beginning to think about what you might be able to do to help answer those. Tom. Uh, thanks again for that question. Uh, Joe, I think you're spot on in your last, last comments. I wanted to recognize, recognize exactly what you said there. And I think Joe's comment reflects on some of what we have to do uh, in, this, in the streets of, of uh, the 5th District and, and, in fact, Long Beach. Um, when I walk the streets and, and, and the neighborhoods and the feedback that I've been getting uh, really amounts to sidewalks, streets, and trees. Those are all big issues that we have in the 5th District. We have the largest number of streets. We have the largest number of uh, miles of, of sidewalks. Uh, it's a constant, constant uh, challenge to upgrade those sidewalks, keep them from being a tripping hazard, um, and, and meet, uh, meet all the safety standards that we need to meet with, with, with all of that that goes on. Um, uh, before we jump into and really get on to working and fixing the Civic Center, I, I really think we need to have a cohesive plan citywide for fixing sidewalks, streets, and trees. All right, Tom, thank you. Carl Kemp. Public safety and infrastructure. You know, there is a huge uptick in property crime in the 5th District. As I said, my wife's car got broken into, the house down the street got broken into, and every door I knock on seems to have this concern. That's why I have a plan on day one to make sure we have funding for police academies and we can improve our response times at our fire department. Number two, that same plan will allow us to fix infrastructure in a timely fashion. Right now, if you need your sidewalk fixed or your street fixed or your tree trimmed, you're gonna be waiting for quite a long time. And it's not necessary for a city our size and as proud as we like to be, we need to make sure that we're doing the things responsible right now to take some of the money and the one-time funding that's been there every year for the last 20 years. If it's there every year for the last 20 years, I got news for you. It's not one-time funding. It's part of the structural budget, and we need to make it that way. Councilwoman Shipsky had it right when she proposed it, and I support her plan to make that a reality in our city. And thank you, Carl. Joe Liven. Matt, we live in the 5th District. All of us here live in the 5th District. My ideas are a little bit different. You know, you talk about 67% of your budget being a businessman. I've said that 15 times up here, but it's a fact. 67% of our budget, or approximately that number, we can't hit it on the mark, is given to police and fire. Um, I say we're a little bit backwards there. Our infrastructure is so far behind. What's the sense of calling a fire truck or a police car to your house when they come down one of the alleys and pop their tire in a pothole? I've walked to 5,000 doors, you guys, 5,000 doors, and what I hear, it's been over 5,000 doors. Fix the potholes, cut our trees, when are our streets being paved? What are we gonna do for our library? Infrastructure, again, is my number one priority for the 5th District, and I think it should be a model for the city of Long Beach. Public safety will always be there, and there'll always be the money there, but where's been the money the last 15 years for our infrastructure? Why can't we pave our alleys? Gotta stop you there, thank, thank you. you. Stacy Mungo. First and foremost, we need to address our economic development issues and getting businesses into Long Beach. There are many businesses that choose to settle in Signal Hill adjacent because the process to get permits is lengthy and we need to have, we don't have an economic development office anymore. And so at my office, we will have someone to walk potential businesses through the process. We'll partnership with individuals who are booking their properties. I've met hand in hand with property owners around the airport who have potential businesses that want to move in but are being swayed away to other neighboring cities. Number two, public safety. As a deputy sheriff, I know more than anyone the, the hurt it feels to show up to a call just a few seconds too late. And so we need to ensure that we have the right number of officers. For the last two years, I have served on Chief McDonald's selection committee to bring in new officers to the city of Long Beach. And we're fortunate today to have 819 officers. We need 120 more. We need to get back to the levels we were at before. And we don't just need generic officers. We need to look specifically on our targeted crime units. Thank you very much, candidates. And thank you, panelists, as well. We're going to close this forum by giving each of our candidates one more minute for a closing statement. And we will begin with Carl Kemp. Thanks again for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure to be up here with my fellow candidates. Listen, I love Long Beach, and that's why I'm doing this. I want to bring the experience that has made me as a man to you, to work for you each and every day in the city hall that made me, in the city that makes me who I am. I'm proud to be raising my two daughters here with my wife, and I look forward to the opportunity to prevent further crimes in our district, to reduce the response times from our fire department, and to improve our infrastructure. That is why police, fire, and teachers have selected me 
as their candidate because they know that I will deliver on my promise and my word <laughs> and that I have a plan that will be effective for them and a plan that's effective for them will be a plan that's effective for you. Beyond that, I want to make Long Beach live up to the true meaning of what it is to be a great city. We strive to be the best, but we aim at C plus sometimes. If we want to be the best, we have to invest in the best, and I have a plan to make our budget steady and strong without compromising our future so that you can have the Long Beach you deserve today. Thank you, Carl. Joe Liven, your closing statement. Well, thank you, everybody, for, for letting us sit up here tonight and tell you our ideas, and they're all great ideas. It's a mutual thanks to each and every one of you people up here tonight, Matt, for taking the time to greet me and make me feel comfortable. That's why I'm so comfortable in telling you why I feel I'm the best candidate for the 5th District. It's 50 years of walking around the streets of the 5th District. I used to have my shirt off running through Pan American Park when I was four years old. Know the parks? I know the 5th District like the back of my hand. There's a one alley, one street, I don't know. I can tell you this, not only does it just stem from the 5th District, but my business experience and my background for the last 30 years in the private sector will pay off it down at City Hall. I've met each and every person down at City Hall that's a public leader. I feel very comfortable in the fact that I can work with people. But most importantly, my loyalties are to the 5th District, and I will provide everybody with what they're asking for. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Stacy Mungo, your closing statement. I'm running for city council because I love Long Beach. I'm proud to be endorsed by hundreds of neighbors throughout the 5th District, past Long Beach mayors and council members, and Don Kanabi, who is endorsing me for my fiscal responsibility. There are so many things we all want to do, and we need to make sure that the person sitting at the table when we're making decisions about the budget is someone who is thinking about our children and our children's children. We can't burden them with the costs that we need today. We need to be prudent in ensuring that our future is secure. I'm running to ensure the fiscal health of our city and the safeguard of our children. I have demonstrated that time and time again by the hundreds of thousands of dollars of budget savings my budgets have come in with and the days I've spent in a black and white protecting and serving neighbors of the County of Los Angeles. Thank you very much for your support and I ask for your vote on April 8th. Please vote for Stacy Mungo. And thank you, Stacy. Tom Sutton, your closing statement. Um, I just wanted to start by saying I have great admiration and respect for each of the candidates up here. Um, to step out and uh, take this step as a candidate is a, is a tremendous uh, venture. I have learned an incredible amount uh, from this process. Um, I have uh, I've been inspired by the people uh, in the district that I've spoken with. Um, I would like nothing more than to return the favor to the people of the 5th District and the City of Long Beach and uh, provide the best work that I can possibly do through collaboration, through my experience as a teacher, through my experience as a small business owner. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a tremendous challenge and I feel I'm up to it. And in fact, I know that I'm up to it and I, I look forward to uh, uh, meeting as many people in the district. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And thank you candidates for, I think, what has been a very dynamic hour. Very much appreciated. Uh, we have other thanks to extend. Uh, panelists, we're grateful for your service to uh, the Long Beach community tonight and every day. We're also very grateful to our d &M Design and Marketing for their generous underwriting donation that helped make this program and this entire series possible. To learn how your organization can also become an underwriter, you can visit our elections page at padnet.tv. My personal thanks also go to our almost entirely volunteer crew that is here tonight at the PadNet uh, facility. One more reminder that this forum will be available as video on demand and will be replayed on Charter Channel 32 and Verizon Fios Channel 41 throughout the election season. The online videos and the broadcast schedule are all at padnet.tv. I hope you'll join us again when we meet the City Council candidates in City Council District 7. That will be on Wednesday, March 5th at 7 p.m. Our second and final mayoral candidate forum will take place on April 2nd, just six days before Long Beach goes to the polls. Thanks for watching and for helping to share, uh, shape, that is, the future of our great city.